Hi everyone, it's Cliff here for IC Test Drive. Thank you so much for those that have been following my YouTube channel. You guys, I really appreciate you. Actually, the main reason why I keep on creating more content and I'll keep on doing that just because of you. For those that are seeing this for the first time, let me just quickly explain to you what I do. So I'm a car enthusiast. I love talking about cars and I enjoy traveling as well. I love giving people advices regarding cars, really. So if there's any specific car that you'd want me to test drive, you want this, any specific car that you'd want me to discuss about, just put a comment below. I'll look for that car, I'll test drive that car, and we'll discuss about it. Today's video is quite different. As you can see, I'm indoors. I'm always a person who's an outdoor person. Love traveling, as I said, and I love being outside. But today's video is very different. That's because a couple of months ago, I met up with this man. Today, I am with... Go Black to, to Africa. Africa. This is your man, not yeah, your boy. Not your boy. For those of you who do not know who Go Black to Africa is, I'll put a link below of his channel. You can follow it up. I had a couple of interviews. Go Black to Africa is an African-American who travels around Africa. He's on a mission to travel all 54 countries. And he has traveled so far in about 12 or 13 different countries. For me, I would regard him as an uncle because if my dad was still alive, he would just be four years younger than my dad. So um, I regard him as an uncle. Some people go call him grandpa. Some people call him brother. Some people call him a financial advisor. All right. Um, so I was very lucky to be one of those people that met up with him and had a couple of conversation with him. He's really a knowledgeable man. Um, and it's very lucky for me to meet up with him. Some of you might uh, follow me because you had seen me on his YouTube channel where we had a couple of interviews. Um, I showed him around our city and we had a couple of interviews on his channel where we discussed about politics. One of his interviews is this one. Hey, we got us a brother right here from Namibia. For those who don't know, I'm in Winhope, uh, capital. Brother, please introduce yourself. My name is Cliff. And we also had time to test our local food, uh, food from the Zambezi region where I come from. And this is what we ate. So this is typical of um, food from the Zambezi region where I come from in my culture. So we have a fish, which we call insui. We have the vegetables, green, which we call chisiu. And then we have pap, which we call inkoko. And then a few spices that we eat. We eat it with hand. That's how we do it the African way. Yeah. And yeah. also ate our game meat. Um, which is a Bushman society, which is very famous um, on one of our local restaurant, um, which is this one I also explained Here, about. We're it. gonna, I'm gonna switch now with you, brother, and you're gonna explain to us each one of these delicacies that you all enjoy here in Namibia. Okay, so we're gonna pass this on to our brother Cliff right here, and Cliff is gonna explain each one of these animals that we. Uh... Um, and then apart from that. Uh, the reason we are talking about, or the reason I am here today, it's because we will still talk about cars, even though I'm indoors, but we will still talk about cars. There's a specific car that I always see every time I drive past by a shop called Louis Botta. So if you do not know what Louis Botta is or what kind of a shop Louis Botta is, it means you've missed out. Because Louis Botta is a, local, is a locally owned uh, shop which where we always buy some fresh chips, which other people call uh, French fries. We buy some rations there, platvosh, burevosh, and all different kinds of fast food. It's owned by a local Namibian. So if you do not know what Louis Botta is, please check out Louis Botta and get yourself some nice meals there. All right, but anyway, enough about Louis Botta. So this specific car, it's a Chevrolet 1997, 1998, uh, 5.7, V8 machine. I'm really frustrated by this car because it always catches my attention and I always wanted to speak to the owner regarding this car. So this car um, was directly imported by the Namibian government. This is one of the car that the Namibian government directly bought from the United States. So it was quite nice, really, because I was with Go Black to Africa at that time, and we saw this car, and it was time for me to stop and just to chat uh, about this car uh, with the owner. So let me explain to you how these cars came to Namibia. So the Namibian government bought these cars. Uh, there were about 800 cars, uh, including some SUVs, some trailblazers. Uh, you might have seen them if you are old enough. So there was some backlash when these cars were bought 
from the United States. People were complaining, why do we buy cars directly from the United States? We could have bought other cars here in Namibia, or we could, we could have bought cars in South Africa. We spent about 136 million um, buying these cars and converting them. Um, it was quite a lot of money that we spent. Okay, it's, there was quite a lot of politics that was involved, but anyway, I'm not going to go into detail regarding the politics that was involved when we bought this car. And unfortunately, I was unable to drive this car because it still had to go through to the mechanic to be checked for some reason. So we were also lucky then we went with the owner to the shop where these cars are maintained. And we saw uh, the man who uh, works on these cars. It's one of the men that was trained um, during those years and I had a chat with him getting repairing American cars that was really nice to see and to see these cars that they are still there and some people are still really trying to look after these cars so very very interesting story if you want to know about that on the 15th of December 2004 uh, one of the uh, local Namibian newspaper uh, released information about this car you can check that as well and you can check the politics that was involved um, regarding these well you know sometimes you know you gotta keep things in perspective mm -hmm. you know it's, it's got to be um, is it is it really beneficial mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is it cost effective yeah you know um, if it's not why do it mm. this mother means of supporting mm. me myself uh, I would have never got myself into that time. I understand the pain of the locals who would say, why in the world we spend so much money on money. these vehicles? Because mm. I understand that, I mean, you got to convert them, mm -hmm. um, which is highly costly. I mean, it's costly. very costly. So, yeah, yeah I understand. Mm. So anyways, we had a chat regarding government spending money on buying cars. Lucky enough, uh, thanks to COVID-19, um, Last year, 2020, the government decided that they are not going to buy cars uh, for the next five years. Um, some people are saying it's because the president is trying to cut government spending money. Some people are saying it's because of COVID-19 that um, um, uh, the government is not buying cars. But anyway, whatever the reason is, I'm glad the government did not buy cars or they are not going to buy cars for the next five years we discussed about other different things this was also basically based on the car that we saw and we discussed about this car what was his thought regarding a government spending money on this kind of cars this was what he had to say these cars that the ministers use here to move around what do you think about that anyway in africa seeing ministers driving in these luxury expensive cars they do it in America too. Uh, <laughs> I think it's a waste of money. I think that it doesn't yep. take, you know, uh, to drive in a, a vehicle that costs in sixty, seventy thousand yep. dollars when you can buy a very, uh, a very reputable vehicle, vehicle. that's classy, mm -hmm. that's durable, that's durable. that's um, for thirty, forty thousand, yep. you know, thirty thousand, yep. forty thousand. Yep. Uh, these fifty, sixty, seventy thousand vehicles that they're driving in. Yeah. It's really a waste it's of money. It's really a waste of money. And apart from that, we discussed also about fuel. Is fuel, would you say fuel is cheaper in the States? Uh, how much is fuel here? Fuel here at the moment is about 15 Namibian dollars, I think. Per? Per liter. Per liter. I don't know how you... Okay, so per liter is four... Let's see, four liters per gallon? So, so it's four need... liters per gallon, so it's, it's one Namibian dollar. I mean, how much is it? Um, per liter here? Per liter here is about 15. 15? Yeah. So that's one US dollar. So that's four dollars. That's about the same. About the same. It's about the same. In certain places, amounts, uh, well, it's probably about, I haven't been back in America in mm -hmm. two months. Mm -hmm. When I left, it was two dollars and 86 cents per gallon. Two dollars? Now, the thing is, so I'm, you, I'm trying to... Y'all's might be more expensive gas here. Yeah. Because ours is two eighty-six per gallon. You all's would be four dollars per gallon. Per gallon. Yeah. Only yeah. to realize that actually fuel in the United States seems to be cheaper than here. That's why they have this big motor, this big 5.7 V8 engine. America don't care about gas. <laughs> they, they scream it when it goes up price, the gas goes up in price, but you're gonna find there are people still buy SUVs and trucks. Mm. No matter how bad the gas mileage is. You know, the saying is this, that if you have to worry about the fuel of a vehicle you want to buy. Don't you, buy it. Don't, you can't afford the vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> you 
You can't afford a vehicle, so you might as well, you know, just stay away from it then. <laughs> if you gotta worry about paying that gas, you can't afford the vehicle. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Which was quite uh, a problem here. People here were complaining about these cars that they were very, very taste on fuel. Um, they were not reliable. They were not good for gravel over the kind of roads that we had. Now, I know people probably get upset at me, but you know, mm -hmm. typically most American cars, the the longevity in them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is not long. They don't last long. Yep. So, this, so I'm quite sure they were problematic. Yeah, 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 yeah. After about four years. Yes, yes. Which brings me to what you th what do you think about the government spending money on cars? I have seen as I drive around. I love cars, as I say, and I really notice um, uh, all different kinds of cars. I've seen government of Shell driving Audi RS4. These are four four liter V8 engine, and they really, really. Very tasty, very, very high maintenance cars. Um, what is your thought about that? For me, if I had to advise the government regarding buying cars, I would advise government to buy cars depending on the purpose of the cars or when the purpose what they want to use the car for. Because there's no need for the government to buy Legend 50, for example, and drive it around the city. Or buying... Um, Mercedes-Benz and drive them around the city. You can buy Corollas. Corollas are very, very reliable cars. I would advise government to really consider buying Corollas. Consider buying VW uh, Polos. Considering buying VW Jettas. Of course, Jetta, they stopped, uh, discontinued Jetta. But VW Passat, these are also very, very nice cars to drive. There's a Passat, gives you more over 2,000 kilometers on one thing. These are cars that I would advise the government really to buy instead of spending money on expensive cars. I do not really understand. I've, I've been traveling and I've traveled to Botswana. If you haven't seen the video where I traveled to Botswana, my trip to Maun, and, and check that video that I traveled to Maun. One of the things that I was fascinated by the government, the Botswana government, is that they know what kind of cars to buy. For example, the police, most of government cars or most of police, they give them the Toyota Land Cruiser because it's well known that the police, when it comes to cars, really, they want or they, you need to give them cars that are very, very um, durable, cars that would last long. You, can, you cannot give them these GD6. For me, GD6, they are reliable Toyotas, but at the same time, they can be um, they can be beat up when it comes to gravel road and the kind of roads that we had. So I would suggest the government, if it was I in, in charge, I would buy Toyota Land Cruiser for the police because it's very reliable, especially for those that are outside, those, are not, those that are not, um, those that are stationed outside the city or in the rural areas. It's, it's a very, very reliable car. Uh, for town-wise, um, I would say uh, Toyota Corolla is very reliable. I would say uh, VW Polo, VW Passat, VW Jetta, these are very reliable cars and still very economical on fuel. And there are other cars, for example, we have Peugeot, which is a French made. And we have actually in Namibia a plant that um, produces this car, that assembles this car. So it's, it will be good for the government to support a local plant that is assembling this car and buy Peugeot. We have seen from the city of Windhoek, the 308 it has been a very reliable car and not very expensive and still very good on fuel consumption. So these are kind of advices that I'll give to, to the government really. When we went for um, COVID testing, we saw ministers buying, driving these Mercedes-Benz, which are very, very, very expensive. And I do not understand why government spends a lot of money on cars, really. Right there, me and a young man was talking um, yesterday about the dignitaries, and he showed me one of the dignitaries here cruising around in a 400 Mercedes-Benz. And, and, um, so he said it was something that really upset him. And I said, yeah, if these leaders could realize that one Mercedes Benz that they buy for their dignity, just the one, 
on the average cost of what the people make here in Namibia and most of these other African countries. Think about it. Do the math. The average person here that I'm told makes about 200 US dollars a month. That's about the average for most of these African countries I've been to. US dollars. That Mercedes Benz that costs fifty, sixty thousand dollars, we'll just say forty thousand. That can give two thousand people jobs annually. Two thousand jobs annually. Thanks to the opposition party. I am not political, um, but but you can see the environment where you have um, some opposition party that are in oppose of what the government do that they advise the government. So um, it's good that the government have stopped this madness of, of, of just buying cars left, right and center. A um, couple of reports on government cars that are standing in government garage that are not being used, which is something that fascinates me. And I need someone to explain to me why uh, there are lots of government cars that are parked in government garage, um, grass growing under them, flat tires and not being used and government still complains that they do not have cars, which is something that's really, I'm, I'm, I'm really intrigued and, and, and this is something that surprises me. I would like to hear from you what your thoughts are regarding government buying cars and how cars are maintained and, 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 and what is your thought and what do you, would you advise if it was you? What kind of cars that you would advise government to buy? Um, we are trying to cut uh, spending. Government is complaining about not having money and it's understandable. Um, and, and, and why do government do not renting out cars, you know, not renting cars from other um, local business people, car rentals, and use them for specific purpose when they need them and return them when they do not need them. This is also just a thought from my, my ideas. But anyway, the most important thing or the main reason is that why do governments spend money on cars? And these are very expensive cars. Why do government not buying cars that are um, affordable, cars that do not use a lot of fuel? Just last week, fuel price increased. And unless if you tell me that government cars um, um, are filling up cheaper price, cheaper fuel, but if the price for fuel on government vehicles is still the same, then um, it's, it's really worth looking into cars that are fuel economical. Uh, we had one of the um, a student, a Namibian student from a NAST, Namibian University of Science and Technology. Her surname is Black. She did a, a research uh, back in, in, in 2016, 2017, where she discovered that there were lots of cars that were just there, that were not being used, that were not being utilized. Some cars were breaking and they were not being repaired. And these are kind of things, really, when it, it comes to government spending unnecessary, um, when it comes to, especially when it comes to cars, I really observe. I'm very lucky now, we have seen the police buying polos. And, uh, these small polos are very, very, very economical, these cars. I love these TSIs. Very good cars when it comes to technology wise and they can still be used and they are very quick if you want to chase cars with GTIs You can still chase, chase them with these cars um, So it's something that I discussed with Go Black to Africa I did not do much of content really with him But for me it was I was very lucky to speak with him to just hear his advices um, regarding government regarding his experience in Africa um, and just to spend time with him it was very, very precious. And I'm looking forward to him um, traveling around Africa and educating people re regarding Africa. So I would like to hear from you, what kind of cars would you advise the government to buy as they cut um, expenses when it comes to cars? And um, what are your thoughts on government not buying cars for the next five years? And I also want to hear, what are your thoughts on government buying Mercedes-Benz for ministers and, 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 and all that. What are your thoughts on government uh, military official? I'm not sure where they are rushing to with S4 Audis, with Mercedes-Benz. I've seen um, very, very expensive cars when it comes to government officials. Government is totally wasteful. Yeah, very wasteful. The problem They're is- They're wasteful because the people who are in the government, it's not their personal money. It's our money from the taxes. From so the taxpayers. They don't care. 
You don't care. You don't care. No. Government do not make money. They just spend money. They spend money. Unfortunately, that's the case that we have here. At our expense. At our expense. Yeah. If you are watching this video and if you have not subscribed, please subscribe to YC Test Drive YouTube channel. That will help me create more content. It will help the algorithm. Uh, it will help the channel to grow as well. Click the subscription button and make sure you turn on the notification bell. Because for that, you will be notified every time I upload a new video. You will be the first to see um, a video that I upload. So um, this is a video that I had for you today. Just the time that I spent with Go Black to Africa and what we discussed regarding uh, government cars. And I will see you in my next video. And keep on following YC Test Drive. Thank you so much for following my YouTube channel.